and welcome to the Game Dev London podcast. My name is Stuart Deville and this is my co-host. I'm Elizabeth Simons. Elizabeth Simons, aka Ziz. Yes. Um, so I'm going to start with handing it over to Ziz so that she can tell us a little bit about who she is and how she got into game development. Cool. Uh, well, I'm a game designer and I generally design games that are on the fringes of the industry. So think mobile phone games that you play in the real world with actors. And I could talk more. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so mainly you'll play the games that I make uh, on your phone, in raves, maybe in museums, or just on the streets of London as you run through the alleyways, darting into buildings, maybe even tearing apart a hotel room that you snuck into looking for a final clue. Uh, so you make games that uh, bridge this uh, gap between reality and the, the digital world. Yes, it's kind of... Um, Currently, that's my favorite place to kind of play in because I think there's just so much that you can do when you have like a game that is equally digital and real. So mm -hmm. where, you, where one's not overpowering the other, where you, you need the phone, you need the game on your phone just as much as you need all of the information in the space that you're in. So what, what would you say is uh, your favorite game that you've made? Favorite game is really difficult because there's a there's a wide range. I really love, like the game that I love is the one I did at the University of Cambridge Museums about climate change. That one, like, really hit home for me. Like being able to make that was amazing, and I adore a game that I made last summer that was just really silly, like where like some people would be drinking gin and running through Covent Garden trying to get ready for an adventure around the world and they had only 90 minutes. But I think my favorite game, like the one that really bridged the, the gap between the digital world and the real world for me was The Hunted Experience, which is a game that I made with Endemol Shine UK based on the mm -hmm. Channel 4 TV show. Hunted, which is, if, um, for those of you that don't know, is a TV show that where you're asked to see if you can be a fugitive and be on the run for 28 days, evading a crack team of kind of like military experts and I guess spies and police uh, that are all trying to track you down. And we were kind of tasked with making a game for the fans of the show that would really make them feel as if they were in the TV show. So did they play that along along with the TV show? Or was that like they play, They came to a space and played it as well as the people on TV who were doing it? So it was kind of like uh, um, one of those things that you played in between seasons of the TV show. So the actual, oh, okay, cool. the actual contestants weren't playing this. This was like, you've watched the entire season. And you're like, oh, oh, there's, I could do this. I could mm -hmm. evade the mm -hmm. hunters. Like, yeah. I know all the things that I would do. And then kind of the end of all kind of going, well, can you? Do, do you want to try? Like only a certain number of people can go on the show, but you can go and try and, and see if you can evade the hunters in this kind of, it was like a three hour game in London um, that happened over a summer. Um, so, so was that a, an event essentially, like people signed up, went to the event and played there? They were, it wasn't just like you could download and play anywhere, anytime. No, this was a, a ticketed event. Um, right. So it was kind of like a, because that way you can have all the actors and part of the fun of it is oh, yes, of course, yeah. you're, you're trying to evade all of the hunters and you're trying to be the one that wins. You're trying, you want to get to extraction first. And you want to get to extraction with as much money as possible. And you don't want to be the group of people who lose and instead get taken in by the hunters and kind of processed for um, 
But of course, since as a game designer, you want to make both winning and losing fun, but mm -hmm. you still don't want to lose. Yeah. Uh, so, one... so did you have people who, who like got caught and were taken to rooms and interrogated? Yes, uh, we had um, bought an ambulance that we had turned into like the hunter's headquarters slash surveillance van. So oh. if in the last like portion of the game, for most of the game, the hunters were tailing you and but not actually taking you in. Okay. Um, but for because we're trying to kind of have that TV moment because on the show, what you watch is you watch the angle of the cameraman as they're like following the hunters and the hunters are saying things like, I think we see our mark. They're walking down the canal and they're wearing this, these things. Is this like, is this the person before they like actually go and tackle someone and right. having that com conversation back and forth with their kind of like crack team of investigator peoples. And so that's the show. That's what you see in the show. So mm -hmm. that's what I designed for the players that they get these videos pop up on their phone that is them like it's that's like you see you see yourself walking down the street you are currently walking down as someone is somewhere behind you explaining your entire every move and everything you're wearing and you get that that kind of like TV moment in the game and have to kind of like go look around and go oh my goodness who's that over there like it's like that's someone on break is that like they're actually like is that a like a, a kind of like prop cigarette? Is they're like trying to throw me off, or like maybe right, that person right. walking a dog? Maybe that's the one that's that's kind of like chasing me down and trying Getting to figure some real out real paranoia going. Yeah, real paranoia and trying to go yeah. like which of these because you're in a real world situation. Like okay, there's like I have these exits in these different directions. Where do I run? How can I get away? So Sounds absolutely amazing. <laughs> It was it was so much fun to design because you got to do like there's some great moments in the show where like this one team went into a pub and live streamed that they were there basically going, I'm here, hunters, come get me if you think you're good enough. Right. Um, so giving the players a chance to do that or to kind of like um, try and go into a safe house and uh, find a bug that was in the house and try and dis dis like, disable it because often the hunters would actually go into your family's homes and place bugs so they know where you were going to be next. Um, so there's always the people like, oh, well, I would, I would teach everyone how to find all the bugs in the house and get rid of them so that they couldn't, they couldn't watch us. Um, or like there was one scene that we had, because I guess we, we normally call them scenes because they, they're little like, yeah. interactive moments um, where you'd go into like an Airbnb and someone who was there to help you would have like a whole bunch of clothes that you could change into so that you could go back into the streets and try and like throw the, the hunters off by wearing completely different clothes than they That's would awesome. have seen you before. Um, but a fan so how, favorite. How, oh. do you, um, how do you even go about designing a game like that? I watched a lot of Hunted. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was kind of like, so um, a lot of it was trying to figure out how do you blend a game that's meant to be thrown, like a game that's meant to be played across the UK? Because obviously mm -hmm. people have free choice. And so when people, when we announced the game, people were like, well, I'm just going to jump on a train and go up to Scotland. I'm like, I don't have the budget to have actors in Scotland. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I have the budget to have actors in London. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of it is like, and in a kind of like a normal video game, you can just say, well, that door doesn't open. Like mm -hmm. there's no yeah. code to open that door. And yeah. in like a location based game, like, I guess like you can have it so that there's no incentive to leave the area and kind of like trying to make staying more interesting and more fun than leaving. Because of course people could, people could go yeah. like, well, the way I'm going to play is I'm just going to leave. Hunters haven't gotten me. I win, which is... So So what What did you do to, um, I guess, did you have like a carrot and stick scenario? Was there like punishment if they did try and leave or was it all just a case of um, swamping them with stuff so that they didn't even think about doing that? So we used like the very end of the show, you have to reach extraction. That's how you win. Oh, uh, right. Okay, cool. So 
after like that's kind of the the model we used is there's an extraction point the hunters don't know where it is it's somewhere in the area and that way and you don't know where it is you know it's nearby and that you'll get told it at some point during the game and mm -hmm. so and there was you had to be able to collect enough money to be able to actually like have the ticket out um okay so there was reason to stick around because this is where you could actually collect the money and this is where the extraction point was going to be. Um, so that seemed to work for pretty much everyone and people, but even then people like did, people do things you don't expect. Like people come prepared yeah, with course, lots yeah. of, lots of change of clothes or people go, okay, we're just going to take taxis everywhere because as long as we're in a car, people can't catch us or we're just going to rent like the, um the street bikes and we're just gonna bike everywhere because then we'll be faster than the hunters which actually isn't true in mm. most in in most of the games that um when we've seen people try and use bikes in a real world scenario they're actually a lot slower because you have to get on and off the bike and that takes right. a really long time if people aren't <laughs> as fast on bikes in urban areas when they're not going like straight from one location to another if they're doing yeah. lots of windy windy stuff, it, it's actually a lot more cumbersome than you might think. And exhausting. Like, I, I, I don't know how long you'd, you'd have them running around for, but um, even when, like, I, I tend to go out on my bike quite a bit, but although these days not so much, but um, it's exhausting. Well, most of the games, because they're in the real world and you get so excited mm. that people generally get to the end like, oh my goodness. Like, even the ones that are in museums, it's like two hours of walking. And they get back mm. like, wow, that was like two hours of solid walking, like at museum paces. So not like, not brisk walking, like yeah. museum walking. And they're and just like exhausted because they've just been like mentally really, really focused and physically in constant movement. So what kind of stuff do you do in museums? Uh, so those are, so like one, the game that I made for Cambridge was kind of like tying together four separate museums in one game about climate change. And so kind of the, the purpose of that game was to show people that you could learn about kind of like what you could learn from a museum, I guess. Okay. So like looking at uh, the Cedric Museum, which is all a whole bunch of fossils, looking at sea levels over time. So where, and learning about how the climate has changed historically. Or then in the Museum of Zoology, looking at how animals have changed over time, but in a much smaller frame, time frame than okay. the fossil museum. And like what, what animals are affected by climate change and what conservation efforts have been out there and learning about what um yeah what kind of what's being done and what research is being done to help biodiversity and that uh, like that kind of element of climate change or and we also had so a, is this um do you like gamify the the process of going around a museum essentially essentially yeah essentially yeah. gamifying like because you know when you do when you go to a museum normally you kind of do that museum shuffle yeah. Where you just kind of like walk around and go, oh, that's interesting. Oh, I'll you look at a few back. things, and then you get overloaded. Things. Yeah, <laughs> and then you get overloaded. After, and you after go, like, you've certainly, go? after you've read like maybe the fourth plaque, you've forgotten what you read on the first one, and then by the time you leave, you're just like, <laughs> what did I? What did I learn? Did I learn a thing? So, I, but obviously, yeah. I guess if, if it's gamified, then that's gonna stick in your stick in your mind a little bit better. Well, and it's gonna it gives you. Because this is it, it, it gives you kind of direction, so there's mm -hmm. still agency. You can go and see like out of a list of things, whatever you want, and you can do it in any order. You can go to any museum you want in whatever order. But um, instead of like, okay, I could look at all of these things, it goes like these are the things that are relevant, and what has interesting stories. Kind of like so when you go into the Cedric Museum, which is my favorite, um, mm -hmm. it's kind of overwhelming because it's fossils and rocks right. and yeah. shells and it's like you'll have like a 
big cabinet that has like 500 like snail shells with little tiny handwriting saying, well, this is this kind of snail shell and this is this kind of snail shell. But with the game, you can kind of go like, okay, in this cabinet, there are three types of snails. And this snail really likes warm water, this snail likes kind of medium water, and this snail likes really cold water. So you can kind of tell over like, and this is kind of, I think, 19th century um, archaeology. Like if you can, if you look at like what kind of snails you dig up in a particular patch and you like of um, ground you can go like, okay, at this time period, the sea level was probably like warmish because we're seeing more of this snail than that snail. And you can just, you can kind of- Oh, wow, okay. You can turn I didn't all even that... know that snails had a water temperature preference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning so much already. Well, and you can kind of make that into a, like a really basic puzzle. So you do mm. a really basic, like kind of like ratio puzzle. And then you learn how you might, if you were going to go and do a little bit of archeology span without using, I guess, modern tools, <laughs> you could kind of like guesstimate what the sea level would have, like the sea uh, temperature would have been at that time period. But otherwise that's, you walk that's so in. so cool, yeah. Yeah, and other, otherwise you walk in and you go, that's just, that's a lot of snails. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, might, it, might, it might make you hungry depending on, you know, what kind of delicacies <laughs> you like. <laughs> I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty old shells. So I yeah. don't know. I so don't know if There's I... no meaty goodness left in there. <laughs> not really. Not really anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, are you a bit of a, a museum buff? You, you quite like museums, I take it. Um, or, I am or was now. It just that you... All right, yeah, okay. I am now. Yeah. Um, it's like and I have like my favorite my favorite pieces. Like in the British Museum, there's this old clay tablet from ages ago, which is literally a complaint letter saying that they received the wrong grade of copper. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, um, what, that, wait, that's a tablet, like an etched. Yeah, an tablet. etched tablet. Which is basically a bad review for a <laughs> copper supplier. Um, Amazing. I actually. That's, that's not the kind of thing that you can just easily erase. Well, I guess you could. You could just break it. But like just... these days, you could just go online and go, "Oh no, wait, don't don't do that. Delete." But <laughs> solid, solid tablet. I mean, it was it was quite small, so it was more just like a, a strongly worded letter to like a, a company that you don't like. Instead of you'd, ha you'd have to also be really ticked off because I know. that would take time. <laughs> it would take a lot of time. Um, there's also, well, I guess you can edit it out if this is not acceptable. Okay, um, yeah. So another of my favorite games. So I'll set the scene. We're in the British <laughs> Museum. We're currently mm -hmm. making a game on cuneiform, and on, on what? Sorry, cuneiform, like What's that? the. Like the um, kind of like written language that's on, I don't know, old things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can't remember which of the many cultures used it or anything <laughs> past that. I just know it's on a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, that's cool. So, that's good. But yeah, so we're like we're making this game, and I'm trying to do like just like um take a picture of a. Uh, of a classical Greek statue mm -hmm. to be able to use as like a wayfinding like clue okay. so that you could go, okay, this is the area of, of the room I want to be in. And I'm trying to take this picture of this statue and the statue's on a really high pedestal and I'm quite small. <laughs> and so I'm trying to get like a good angle on the statue. And the only thing I can get a good angle on, <laughs> you can see where this is oh, going, no. yeah, that's are <laughs> the family jewels. Yeah, yeah. And so then I was like, you know what? I, there's a lot of this in this museum because there's a lot of like ancient Greek and Roman stuff in this museum. Mm -hmm. And that would make a great Valentine's Day game. Oh, wow. And you could do that with like, that could be a date. It'd be a weird first date, but that could be a date. <laughs> or just going yeah. out with your friends to do like sex and love in the British Museum. Um, 
and then so started making that game and then realized there was a problem because there were too many so oh. trying to tell people to look for just the right vase with like oh. the bits on it mm -hmm. well there would be 20 of them in the same room <laughs> um which <laughs> that so that's that's one of my favorite games i've ever made uh it doesn't come up much in interviews. No, yeah, I'm sure. Because <laughs> it's very specific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was one of my best received games by the by the players. That's that's really good. <laughs> and so so was it actually played on Valentine's Day then? Uh, yeah, all through the month of February. It was like a special pop up. Um, oh wow! Well, I had the whole month. That's cool. Yeah, and so it. It was a very silly game, which I'm sure I, I is very surprising. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, because that's like, again, it was another event game because uh, you had actors that ended with a song that was a mad lib of all of the things that the people had learned throughout the game. It, oh, wow. Of course, there was a prize and that was a, um, a chocolate rooster. Oh actually a rooster taste, taste tasteful that's that's yeah. so like right, so nice. like it actually it, it was a chicken but um obviously it was funnier because then you could announce it as one thing and then go like what do you mm -hmm. mean yeah so a, a complete play on words mm -hmm. <laughs> nicely done <laughs> thank you it was <laughs> so uh, one of my most intellectual games by far yeah yeah no for sure <laughs> I mean, you, you you can't always make games about you know how how serious that or the seriousness of how you can use snails. So exactly, you, you, exactly. You've got to mix it up. Yeah, <laughs> you've, got, you've got to have some fun, silly stuff in there. So um, so you're also into um, LARPing. Uh, yes. For people that don't know, that's live action role play. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, <laughs> it's funny because LARPing, so the way I kind of found my way into designing games, because I always loved games. Um, mm. when I was younger, I was homeschooled, which meant I was basically did all of my learning on the computer, which basically meant I only played RuneScape and then nice. like <laughs> yeah. a couple days a month speed did all of my all of my actual homework but the rest of the time only played runescape my clan was very uh it was very involved so okay <laughs> quite quite intense group well i ran it so oh right okay <laughs> um but I would, as I was kind of like, as my kind of way into games, like actually going like, wait, I could design them, was doing lots of interactive theater and then going like, well, it would be even more fun if this was all, if this was kind of more gamified, kind of what would that look like? And of course, there's, there's always, there's been lots of games happening for forever. But mm -hmm. through that, I found live action role play, which the ones that I do, which are fest LARPs. So those are like two and a half thousand to three thousand players in a field, and that's not including the non-player characters or the monsters. Um, wow! Where you basically live in a tent city for like three to four days. Um, so it's better than a music festival, essentially. I mean, I've not. I've not been to too many music festivals because. Well, I've I've been to a, a, a quite a few. Uh, I even went I went to Reading uh, Festival for like nine years in a row, um, and it's mo it, 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 you do live in a tent, but every day you go and see a band, which is is it, it's, it's cool going seeing live bands. That's cool, but I would imagine role playing every day instead of seeing a band every day would be far more entertaining. It was, it's, I mean, it's incredibly entertaining, at least for me, uh, mm -hmm. cause I, it's like, so like a typical day of like when I'm at this LARP 
is like in the morning, everyone's kind of cooking breakfast by the fire. You're either getting ready for battling that day because there's a big battle in the morning or getting ready to kind of have a slower start to the day and maybe go and talk to try and like find some plot or try and like you might have a Senate motion that you want passed or you need to go and get some rituals done or you really need to go and figure out what's happening with a meteor that's going to land in a city somewhere and figuring out like can we move it with magic if we move it with magic where do we move it to because it's got to land somewhere um right and so for me generally i i like the battles it's like 600 aside in the middle of either in the sometimes there'll be like field battles sometimes there'll be forest battles sometimes a mix of both um, sometimes there will be drakes, sometimes there will be lobster men. Um, wow. It's, uh, and I just remember like the first time of going on to battle and seeing like the other, the enemies and having like hundreds of people walk over the hill towards mm. me. I think I yeah. actually started to cry because it was <laughs> just, it was a very intense, intense moment that I yeah. could not have been prepared for. <laughs> yeah, um, there's no, there is no preparing for that. Not really. So then right. you have like you have like your day of battling, of bureaucracy, of arguing, and ha like going and buying cakes from children, and that is always extremely overpriced. But they're also <laughs> you can't really say no to like there's like I made this yeah. myself. And you're like, <sighs> and then, then you eat the cakes because they're tasty. Mm -hmm. um, going to like actual pubs that people have pot, like kind of set up in their tents and right. buying cider and cheese boards with nice fake money which is great um that is great i've been to like actual so do you do you have like um typical like rpg stories where like there's a dispute in a bar and a, a fight will break out in a bar while you're just like there a hundred percent. Um, That's and amazing. <laughs> it's well, when people get really into it. So, um, mm. but you'll be like in like the little in, in this kind of pub in a tent and they'll have candles um, in like candelabras from the ceiling. In one corner, there will be the person serving all the drinks. There'll be wooden tables and benches. And then in another corner, there'll be someone playing the accordion with someone playing like a flute and someone else singing. And you're sitting there drinking your cider and eating your cheese. And then... Just sounds like, amazing. And then over at the next table, someone will insult someone's heritage or will insult, <laughs> um, like, just be talking about political matters or, ma like, magical matters and get to a huge argument. And, like, I've even seen some people, like, like, like punch the table so hard they actually break their hand. <laughs> like, they Whoa. get... Like people get really into it yeah. um, or like have like people drag people out of the tent, like drag people out of the tent mm -hmm. to yeah. like um, to say that they have to leave because they're just getting too impassioned and the argument. It's just it's it's uh, it's amazing. Pretty much. It sounds it's, amazing. It's just really fun. <laughs> yeah, because I like there's a, a lot of. I would say most people want to try and like get out of their humdrum life and would like to live a different life and be a different person and some people even know like the kind of person that they want to be or the kind of character that they want to be. It's mostly why people play games, right? So yeah. if you're actually able to go and like, yeah, live out that experience for, for however long you get to live it for, then yeah, I imagine people just dive on it and, and yeah. revel in it. Um, like the, like a lot of my friends, they have a theater troupe. And so their game is basically be like making plays and going and performing them around like this tent city that kind of pops up and getting paid for it and having everyone join in and just like being able to be a performer for a bit, because that's not something mm -hmm. that they can be in their normal lives. Um, or like being able to be the big, the big hero, um, yeah. Or being able to, like, make, be the person that makes the decision of where does the meteor fall. Right. Um, so how how do they? Um, you said that there was like um, 
uh, obviously there's people that go there to enjoy the experience, there's actors, but there's also monsters. How do they do, what, how do they do monsters? So there's the big battles in the day and then there's skirmishes like for the rest of the, like in the morning. So cause there's a big battles in the morning and then there's skirmishes throughout the rest of the day and into the evening. Mm -hmm. And so there's some people that all they want to do is be a monster and hit things. Like okay, that's, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's what they want to do. And at night, then they get to go and be their like rest and relaxation character and go into the tent city and watch all the shows and um, go and drink in the pubs and kind of go campfire to campfire to see what's going on. But their fun is in like the tactics and being like, I think they're called the hundred. And if you end up being on the same part of the field as them, then you're gonna get a really good fight. So it, when it when it comes to fighting, do you need like some kind of tactical experience? Is it, like how how do you decide when you've been when when someone's beat you or or when you've beat someone else? So there you can be like each kind of like nation has generals, and they always there'll be a field marshal for each battle. There'll be runners. So there will be like actual commands on I don't do that it's mm -hmm. tactics is not my thing I uh, I also play a kind of a directed player character so I'm like the spirit of one of the nations so my job is to be very dramatic and con like uh, I generally continuously run into the opposing line and get my legs chopped off and then people have to drag me back and they're like no the <laughs> Egregore, we must save her <laughs> okay. so that's so that's my role. My role is to <laughs> sometimes ignore <laughs> ignore the calls if it makes sense for like, um, I had like my brother died in the last battle. And so for the rest of that battle, got, he got eaten by like baby sharks. The rest of that battle, I was completely beside myself, <laughs> running at the enemy, screaming, crying. That was so much fun. It was also really exhausting because I think I actually did cry for like, while battling and then after the battle wow. for like t an hour that's amazing you just you that's, just... Gotta, that's gotta be such an amazing release though like people people go to therapy to kind of get these things like out of themselves turns out you just need to be in the middle of a battle <laughs> yeah you just need Where... you, everyone everyone should go laughing it, <laughs> just, just it should like, be one of those phone, things your phone dagger <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> it's funny, when I was younger, um, to, to quite some time back, um, there, uh, I used to hang out with these guys who were um, a bit older than me, funnily enough, um, and they used to do this kind of stuff all the time. And I, I never really understood it. I think maybe I was just a bit too young and a bit, yeah, just a bit too myself and a bit too insular probably actually. Um, but they were talking about um, all of the weapons that they made and I, mm. I used to think to myself, you you make weapons? What? And then, like, he showed me one and it was this, like, huge, um, it was like a spear that also had, uh, like, an axe blade on one end and okay. a, a hammer, like, uh, on the other end. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, obviously made out of foam and stuff, but he, yeah, he had made it and I was just, I, I didn't understand. And I guess I kind of still don't really, like... I, I'm I'm looking forward to the point where I I can I might try and join you next time you go actually. You say you should. It's <laughs> yeah. really fun. So I think my favorite at another LARP where I wasn't in I wasn't in, like in charge of anything because at this at this one that I've been talking about I'm actually like on the player support team so often helping new players who get there and go. What's this? There's so much. This is like completely overwhelmed. Like helping them, like kind of like get into navigate it. the whole thing. <clears throat> but let's see. So, so is there like a like a, um? Is it a continual story? Do you always play the same character, or do yeah, you, you just play the same character until you die, or you retire that character? Um, okay. And I'm really surprised I haven't died yet because. Didn't you say you lost your legs? about 10 times in the same battle but then you've got like the you've, you've got the healers like so like it's, it's one of those oh, of moments course, of, like because there's magic right there's magic um yeah. okay. or like it's not so much like like they might be mangled or something and so like they're able to have like mm. 
um, poultices or herbs or something because there's different types of healing. So okay. just kind of making making sure they get enough to do. They get plenty of stuff to do. But mm -hmm. I was being extremely reckless that that <laughs> <laughs> Um I can't remember what the question was. Um what was the question? <laughs> Oh, I was just talking about, yeah, whether or not you keep your character or oh, yeah. reset or... No, it's, it's kind of a continuous storyline. Um, I think the one, so this other one I went to has been going on for like over 20 years. So there's people who like met there, had children, and now the children are teenagers and like are fully in the game now. Wow. Yeah. Um, and that so one I got it's to... like um what's that game people play second life is it or mm. that's what it's called right second life um but that obviously that's all digital so this is like a real world version of, of that you just actually go to you get to go that's live it. a different life yeah and um, that's it's just i can't imagine growing up in larps because that's not something i did i grew up in ballet but that would be i can't decide whether it'd be amazing Mm, or like yeah. really overwhelming i think it'd be a lot of fun honestly like they only use all that kind of creativity and have like, yeah well, yeah well, it's like when you're little there's you have so much energy i so i have a two-year-old and he's exhausting so <laughs> <laughs> i'm i'm <laughs> i'm pretty sure if i could just say to him look we're, we're gonna go role play for like a week he'd he'd come back like eyes at sources from just the amount of fun he would have had especially meeting people who are just in in character being completely bonkers yeah not that not that there's not enough real bonkers people in the in the real world but so there's certainly i think yeah in the real world there are bonkers people but they don't have that much depth really do they they're just bonkers whereas if if you go to a role play then there's going to be a there's there's reasons for this bonkers. You you can talk to them and find out their backstory and all sorts it's, of it's, amazing stuff. It's a completely different thing. Like like, um, I think the most fun I've had is going and being a goblin, and just getting up to so much mischief. Mm, yeah. Um, like it's. I mean, I know like people telling stories of role playing is not is it can get really boring. So. But had, I'm entertained, so yeah. <laughs> I had, like, had an amazing weekend. It was the first time as this character and um, found someone who had stolen something that they shouldn't have, stole it from them, went and sold it as a forgery to someone else, went to the actual <laughs> nice. owners of the item, told them that I knew where it was. So they, and then watched as like a whole bunch of armed people, like it's like literally like 15 to 20 people went off to go and find this person that I had sold something <laughs> as a fake, but actually was real too. <laughs> and then, um, and like that, that's like the only, like the, but got like a whole bunch of money from the person I sold it to, from the person I sold the information to, got more money from the person once they had found the from the owner, got more money from the owner after they had found the person with the actually not a forgery to tell them the rest of the story. Wow. Then <laughs> so many layers. <laughs> like I was, it was, it was one of those things where like the like, the story made absolutely no sense, but it was just like actual things that I had done. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like. Um, kind of like so. Is that, did you just like make that up as you were going along? It was kind of like. Well, I've got this object. What would be the funnest thing I could do right now? It's like, okay, I will sell it to someone and make a lot of money and then watch mm -hmm. them to go to like <laughs> beat up their apprentice because they had <laughs> kind of like broken the armorer's code. Oh, it was, it was just, it was a continue like, right. how could I make this more ridiculous kind of, kind of weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and you can't I can't be that cheeky in real life like well I mean you could but there's real I world could. consequences <laughs> there's real world consequences and here it's just yeah. someone with a big foam axe coming after me or a big foam, foam hammer and actually hilariously after all that happened that weekend no trouble ever came to me oh wow you're a true um, goblin it's in your I blood was, it was so good <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah. You literally. I think you might. You must actually be part goblin because that possibly. Well, got... only only a goblin could get away with that much mischievousness. I have like a fantastic. I don't think this will fit over my. Oh wow! Okay, that's good because that was going to be one of my questions. Like, how how did you end up? To, how far did you go to look like a goblin? <laughs> Reasonably far. There's a mask somewhere, yeah. but I like the the brine like frowed. Fruit. So so what was it like a, a prosthetic mask or was it like some prosthetics and paint in your face or some prosthetics and here. Ah. <laughs> Just so happens. <laughs> it's just out of shot. There it is. Amazing. So the rest of it would be would have been painted. Which way is the ears? The ears are this way. Obviously weird because I'm wearing headphones. <laughs> Still, I I I feel like I'm talking to a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> I, I can officially say that I've had a podcast episode hijacked by a goblin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I could hijack it more, but we'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, maybe, Start asking maybe one you of, questions. Maybe, maybe <laughs> one of the future episodes, we can actually just have you totally interrupt and uh, hijack a, an interview. Well, I have to get, so that I was Fidget and my friend was Widget, or was I Widget and she was Fidget? I always get I those know. two mixed up as well. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd have to have her with me as well because, like, we, we generally cause mayhem together. It's kind of mm -hmm. a double act thing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've heard that about goblins who, who run around in pairs. Yeah, oh. but that sounds, sounds absolutely amazing. Um, and I'm sure it's opened a few eyes for people that had no idea such wonderful things were happening. <laughs> Out, out in fields. That's that's what happens yeah, out there. You pretty much that, out in fields. Yeah, you you think that people are, there's farmers out there. I mean, there obviously there's there are farmers too, and and sheep. The the, yeah. the things that you think are out there are out there, but also <laughs> goblins. Yeah, goblins. Lots of goblins. And <laughs> so, um, I guess people who dress up as like uh, giants and stuff. Do, do they just tend to be people who are giant and go? Well, I, clearly I'm massive. So, or do you get people who wear stilts and stuff and? Like it depends far, on the how system. How far do people go? It depends on the system. So, like the one that I tend to go to, you're only re like the players aren't allowed to be giants or anything like that. But the monsters, um, if they have ogres or giants, like they'll be on stilts. They'll have big like football pads covered with like foam prosthetics. Mm -hmm. So they'll like I saw a frost giant once, and it was enormous. Um, but like the, the costumes actually look super real, mm -hmm. but yeah. you have like other ends of the spectrum where anyone can be anything. Like right. I could have been a giant at the one I was a goblin at by just saying, like pretending I was a giant and that would have been fine. So does that, does that mean that you just have to announce yourself when you arrive somewhere? <laughs> I am Faustus the giant. <laughs> and people go, are oh, you? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> yeah, an interesting experiment. Um, I think they'd probably still think I'm the goblin and just trying to put one over just, on just them. Being, just, yeah, a mischievous <laughs> goblin pretending to be a giant. You could always get on someone's shoulders. You know, like they do in all of those cartoons where... Uh, to Well, especially if you're paired up with your goblin friend. Just get a big jacket... <laughs> I've given you ideas now. <laughs> I, 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 will, I, think, I will log I think, that away for further mischief. I think you're actually a goblin. I, I saw how <laughs> your mind was working there. <laughs> mm, I, I don't know if I'm a goblin or like a, a pixie. One of the two. A pixie's mischievous <laughs> as well? Yeah, like pixies and fairies right. are super, super mischievous. Fit, I, like all about trickery and i guess that, um yeah there's lots of different types of uh mythology isn't there around all of these different mystical creatures and, and i like goblins fae and pixies and in my version they're all tricksters because right. yes because that's fun because that's fun <laughs> and that's what i want to be <laughs> yeah of course yeah 
that <laughs> you're always gonna gravitate towards the thing that uh yeah the thing that would entertain you the most really i guess yes <laughs> well the other character i play is like much more serious well that's not true i did accidentally plan a date that ended up going on the field up against like 60 wraiths without any armor or weapons and there were like five of us and the okay. only thing we could do was like sing a, a song at the wraiths as we slowly backed out like a very serious <laughs> slow sad song as we backed back out of the encounter going what but that happened because not a lot of people wanted to go on it and we're like do we open do we open the gate anyway do we just go through and see what happens and generally, my answer to that is yes. Mm -hmm. Go and investigate. <laughs> see what's happening. That's, it'll be much more fun if we've tried it. If we die, that's fine. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> do, you, do you make sure that you've got um, like a, a heel on your team, I take it, just no. so you can do these things? No. 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 <laughs> Literally went it. in, zero weapons, zero armor. I got so yelled at when I got back to my nation. <laughs> Like, you're not allowed to do this ever again. Like, huh? Well. Amazing. Maybe? That's so cool. Um, I, th I think that I have learned so much in, <laughs> in this uh, episode. About, um, about like, LARPing or about, like, me personally? <laughs> a, li a little bit of both. A little bit of both. <laughs> um, I, well, I, so my knowledge of LARPing prior to this was that it existed. Okay. I didn't really, like I knew people, yeah, I knew it was role play, obviously. Um, I, I knew I knew what it, LARPing stood for. <laughs> but yeah, I had no idea of like all of the wonderful stuff that actually happened. I'm gonna have to go do it now. Yeah, clearly. and there's, there's a whole bunch that I really wanna do. There's one like on, like there's a battleship somewhere in the Midwest, I think, in the, in the States, in the United States, where mm -hmm. it's actually, you're all supposed to be on a spaceship and you're all different members of the crew and you don't ever leave the, the battleship. So they like redressed it all as like, well, a spaceship. Um, but it still has all like the pipes and all of the buttons and switches. So I, I assume it's a fairly easy, a fairly easy swap, but you basically mm -hmm. live on it for a number of days as like, if you, I think it's kind of more of a pay to play one. So like if you pay a lot, right. then you get to be the captain. Um, versus okay, cool. like our bridge crew or like the cook or just like one of the hopefully not the red shirts <sighs> <laughs> i'm not i'm not gonna dig deeply into that one <laughs> um so yeah we've we've um we've actually now hit a a pretty good uh length of time we've been talking for quite a while believe it or not <laughs> yeah um so yeah that um this was basically uh everyone's introduction to ziz and the mad wonderful world that she lives in um and i hope you've all learned a lot and i hope you're all gonna now go check out where your nearest larping event is happening i know i'm going to <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh thank you for watching um you can if you're not already watching us um on the game day of london Dot com website then and maybe go visit us there um we drop an episode every monday um and yeah that's it from us um so it's goodbye from me see ya <laughs> and goodbye from sis <laughs> goodbye bye